but if i would have been teaching a graph i would have drawn x axis y axis and first start saying that x equal to 0 is the y axis okay yeah y is equal to 0 is the x axis right so we are drawing the graph itself with the equation of a line and then what I would have done is to explain the slope I would have drawn x equal to 1 and shift it to the next line 2 and ask somebody what is the equation of this line I am sure you, if you can do it now I am sure that clears anybody who doesn't have any basics also will understand and then take the line y is equal to 0 shift it up shift it down y is equal to minus 1, x is equal to minus 1 and play with all the lines and then put different lines and ask people to define the equation of the line. Okay. Got it? Yeah. And one basic probably concept which people have to understand is when I say x equal to 0 slope, y is equal to 0 different slope mm -hmm. because it represents slope is with a base. You got really confused between the graph and the chart. Many of the examples which I have shown are not graphs. Graph okay. means there is a numerical value. Okay. It is not a representation of a diagram. There are okay. different terminologies which uses in mathematics. Graph, diagram, chart. We never call pi graph. We only call it as pi chart. Chart is a nominal representation a a significance of something is to be shown like few examples which have shown all are chart only graph when you define graph b with the number there has to be x axis and y axis mm -hmm. you can have line ch line chart also is there oh, okay like histogram is called line chart where you don't have to have x axis and y axis i don't know why um, see people who teach mathematics should immediately react okay are you getting i don't know from where did you get this if it is from a basic textbook give it to me i will write to the author okay. diagram is always a generic representation of a trend okay see a trend doesn't have numerical values when there is a numerical value, it becomes graph. So all the graphs are charts, but all the charts are not graphs. No. Pie chart. No. Assume that I want to say the ratio between the expenses of somebody 20%, 30%. I can draw a pie chart, right? Mm -hmm. Pie chart is a pie chart. I can have a bar chart. I can have a table. A table is not a table also I can represent right this much percentage is used for maintenance of house this much percentage for no uh, crockeries maybe this much is for the cloth distribution percentage all that is a table or a chart okay. ratio of things chart only graph means numerical values so understand when you look at it look at similar words in mathematics and all easiest method uh, when you ask somebody to give a example of a graph and somebody tells immediately you should tell that no that is not graph it is a chart okay. Okay. okay i can convert the chart into a graph by giving numerical yeah. values okay yeah if there are no numbers there are no x axis y axis and a, that is why it is called a graph there is a metric there is a metric yeah. added to that distance can be measured slope can be measured so you started with the graph in between diluted into chart came back to graph again okay yeah see understood no yeah, yeah. now look at graph chart diagram represented no. diagrammatically see the the human pictures which you have shown is diagrammatic picture it is not even a chart. Yeah. The first one for economics what you have shown is a chart. As a mathematician, terminologies have to be very precise. Yeah. 
Economics people will draw charts. They don't draw graphs. Mathematics people will draw graphs. There has to be line, slope, x-axis, y-axis, metric. I must be able to measure it precise. Okay. Okay. I cannot draw uh, a Indian map and put all the uh, grains which are made and then say this is a graph. No, it's a chart. Okay. If I so, put, if I put that in quantities. And the growth from each year, how much it has grown, it can become a graph. And the way, no, the x-axis, y-axis, shift it and show. That's how I teach generally. I draw one line and then put it there and then show that shift it there and ask people, tell me the equation of this. Yeah. In a, in a classroom, a concept to explain it is 40 minutes. Mm. But the content of the 40 minutes only will be 20 minutes. Yeah. Because in the classroom, you keep on repeating. You look at the phases and then give reflections, reactions. So a concept generally, that's why uh, I said micro teaching 20 minutes. Because we are expanding on it and describing it later, another 20 minutes. So 40 minutes. The objective and scope. Background is why do you learn this? Where is it used? Yeah. How is it used? Such things will make it very, very... Like, yeah. See, prediction actually graph is to predict i know the trend of economics for last the population growth from 1970 71 72 73 is like this so i can predict how is it going to be after some time okay. cool. a prediction predictive analysis most of the predictive models are with the graphs uh, if you know the population from 1960 70 80 it it shows a trend so defining the trend, you extend the line, uh, project it to x-axis, you will know in 2030, 20, 20, what will be the population. Generally, in the competitive exams and all, the graph is used for giving you a, um, somebody is driving a motorbike with the so and so speed, starting from wherever you want, the speed is given, then you know at uh, this much distance where he will be at what time where he will be correct so time is on the x-axis and uh, maybe distance is on the y-axis one hour he drove 50 kilometers right so the slope keeps changing you say where he will be after four four hours even financial growth knowledge growth communication skill everything is like that communication skill if you know the number of word uh, words which you know from childhood age number age three age four age five and what will happen at the age 20 and after that how much you grow a lot of psychological problems are analyzed like this uh, population growth uh, financial growth a lot of graphs in every, every engineer every financial analyst everybody needs this another practical example can be you tell the weight of the liquid and the liter in which it measures right you will get a linear graph Definitely, it's a linear graph. The quantity and the weight, always it's a linear graph. Another uh, health tip I'll tell you, if you measure your height in the morning and evening, it varies. Evening, if you walk a lot, it will become less. And next day morning, again, it grows. Your, your backbone has got a, a, a sponge which makes you to dampen. The more you use, the more number of steps you use by climbing steps and all that, your height will get reduced and next day morning when you're sleeping it expands again and next day morning it will be you can measure it at home and then see morning measure your height and then evening measure your height by walking not sitting like this you have to walk climb steps that's why you can see the people who stay in the mountainous regions they have less height okay. the people who live in cities they have they are taller the next generation, all of you are much taller than your parents because you are not climbing steps, you are not walking, you are only using lift. You are not lifting yourself, somebody is lifting you. Jump, so <laughs> you jump and then check, then you will know. <laughs> now, any point of time you can come up with your lessons and ask me. I can, I can do the same thing what I am doing now. It is not to uh, no, criticize or harm you, it is to support your... Uh, maybe whatever I have got little I can share it need not be only on the micro teaching and comments and all that anytime 
any topic any time i have taught up to 12th class intermediate uh, btech most of the subjects like this most of the subjects see every every textbook when you have got grade 4 the first few sentences will be the it says the student should have this background student should have learned this and as a continuation they are teaching the next chapter or some of the textbook the first chapter is what you have learned so far so the basic assumption is there students are with us on this topic this much they know so how do we check that in the class we have to ask questions no we can we can say this is the topic you tell me what do you know about it no you about it okay so then how do i check if they don't respond when i draw a line x axis and y axis what do you call this line then immediately they should tell x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 i am sure if once they learn that in throughout life that will be the first response they have okay so that means uh, if i am uh, teaching in year 10 or year 9 whatever which, i have to start with that whichever so, class it's a, it's a fun it's like a fun no okay. it's okay. like it's like a basic thing basic thing yeah. see for example i am talking about the history of india definitely um, 1947 may not be in the textbook in that chapter but still i will say pre independence post independence if i am teaching economics micro economics macro economics all these will come as basic thing right or measure the i can teach same topic in different grades but based on the grade i may i may talk about a poetry in a kg class i may talk about a poetry in a phd students no my my range will become different based on the reception okay. theoretical classes people say background of the student should be tested before delivery we say that no i know you know this that's a wrong information second wrong one information. end of the class so far we have learned this 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 no we have learned is not correct i have learned whether you have learned or not you should tell me so the best method is tell me what did you learn today then point 1 2 3 4 5 6 if you tell i am happy if all points are covered if all of them did not cover all points that means i am bad students are good so i have to correct whatever i wanted to stress whatever i want to convey it did not reach them so i have conveyed but it did not reach them so it's not right right Yes. it says big bang and uh, summing up big bang you know, yes. drag the attention of the students and then tell this is what tell me what did you do today and next day morning tell me what did i do yesterday what did we learn yesterday so that if at all somebody was absent from other students they will gather that information so that they can continue with whatever i am going to do today 